Hi everyone, stay tuned till the end of the video for a giveaway for the next class at OnlineCardClasses.com. Hey everyone, Christina here. Welcome to another card video at my YouTube channel and blog. Today I'm using the Boom Bots stamp set from Paper Smooches. This is a new stamp set. It's perfect for Valentine's Day, but I'm going to make a thank you card instead. I think thank you cards are awesome, especially around this time of year as we're receiving lots of holiday gifts. We want to make sure that we say thank you to our loved ones who share those thoughtful gifts with us. So this is kind of a fun way to do that. I'm starting out by stamping two robots from the stamp set onto some Arches watercolor paper. This is cold pressed watercolor paper. And I've stamped the images in VersaFine Onyx Black ink. It's a waterproof ink, so it's perfect for doing watercoloring. And I've masked off the hand on one of the robots so that I can stamp the other robot right next to it and it looks like they're holding hands. Now, if this isn't a perfect masking technique. I will have to do a little bit of fixing of the area, but for just stamping on the fly, this worked fantastically. So I'm gonna take my envelope addressing pen from Pilot. This is a waterproof pen and I'm just gonna finish off that hand area and also just clean up some of the areas that didn't stamp as dark as I wanted them to. So I'm gonna use a technique today that I'm going to call, I don't know if this is the real name, but I'm going to call it a dry paper marker technique or dry palette. I think that's what I call it. What will I call it? I'm gonna call it the dry palette marker watercolor technique. I'm not sure what else to call it. A lovely blog reader and YouTube viewer named Karen emailed me this video that she found online from a guy named Daniel. I'll link to that video up in the top corner. He showed a really interesting way of using Tombow markers as watercoloring mediums. And basically you create a palette on some watercolor paper with the colors that you'd like to use and then you pick them up with a wet paintbrush. And I thought this was particularly interesting because um, comparing it to coloring onto an acrylic block or a slick surface like a craft sheet or some laminated paper, I find that I get the colors lasting a little bit longer this way. Um, not that they fade, but I'm, I mean that um, I don't have to replenish my palette quite as often, if that makes sense. Um, I can pick up the color a little bit more evenly this way, and I don't feel like I need to water down that entire area for something that's light. I can just pick up just what I need. It sort of reminds me of painting straight from the sheets of Peerless watercolor. It's not quite the same because this isn't quite as strong, but it has sort of that same feel to it for me. So I am starting out with a gray color and I wanted to bring in this pink, but that pink didn't pick up quite as much. So you'll see me add a, a little bit of a darker pink here in a minute. But the main thing I wanted to let you guys know is that I wanted to make sure that these two robots, even though I was going to be painting them gray, I wanted them to be slightly different shades. So this first robot that I painted, he's a little bit more of a bluish gray. I'm gonna add a little more blue on top here in a minute. Um, and when I start painting the other robot, he's going to be more of a greenish gray. I just wanted to have a little bit of variety in color and make sure that they looked different from each other. So this watercolor technique, I kind of had a lot of fun with it. I think this would be a great way to take your markers when you're traveling and kind of stretch their use. You could definitely still, you know, color your markers out onto a slick surface, but if you didn't have a slick surface to do, to do that with, you could definitely just scribble off on the side um, when on your watercolor paper, off on the margin where you're not going to be using the paper, and you could use that as your palette. If you want to mix colors like I did here um, with that kind of greenish gray color on the other robot, I would suggest doing layers of color. So I did kind of like a layer of gray and a layer of green or a little layer of blue. That seemed to work well for me. And I'm also layering colors here on the bottom here to give some ground to my scene. Put a little blue on top and how to kind of fade up as well. I'm using a little more of that black to darken some areas. And then that is going to finish up my little scene here. I think it's so super cute and it's such a fun way to use those Tombow markers. So I'm gonna go ahead and peel off the blue tape that was holding it down to my board here. That's just in case I ended up using lots and lots of water. This paper didn't warp too much, but I do that just in case. 
And then I ended up uh, trimming it down a little bit near, near the end, but before I trimmed it, I actually painted the bottom with black. And I just took some black distress ink. I could have just used a black marker for this or even some black watercolor or whatever. I just happened to have my black soot distress ink pad out. And I just brought that color up near the bottom of those robots and kind of blend that in with the painting that I'd already done. I just wanted to give it more of a, a grounded shadow area near the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and clean up this area right around their feet. And then I'll use my heat tool to speed along the drying process. I'm going to do some stamping right below them. And I'm going to use the Thanks a Bot stamp from the stamp set. And I'm going to do some embossing actually. So I'm stamping in Versamark ink. And I'm going to use a really, really bright neon green embossing powder from WOW. I chose this color because it made me think of kind of those old computer screens that were black with green words on them. Um, if you're anyone that's older than probably 25, you might remember these. But if you're younger than that, you might have no idea what we're talking about. But really old school computers, they used to have a black screen with green words on it that you type and I thought that was just an interesting thing to do for robots. The card base I'm using today is made out of some Nina, Nina Solar White cardstock. I'm creating a, a four bar card and that size is three and a half wide by about four and seven eighths tall. I just rounded that up to five inches just for ease of measuring and I've masked off the area above the fold and that's because I'm going to be stamping a pattern on the background. Taking all the nuts and bolts and uh, screws and nail heads and things like that and arrange them into a little cluster of stamps. I'm going to pick that up with my compact stamp press so that I can stamp this repeatedly across my card base here and get a nice pattern. I'm using the Smoke Ink Pad from Simon Says Stamp. I'm going to ink up that stamp and just start stamping away. And when it comes to areas where I need to just fill in some little gaps, I can use some uh, more masking to do that. I'm going to use a little bit of cardstock to mask off the rest of that back of the card and go ahead and stamp up and over the fold. And I'm going to peel off that masking tape along the fold of the card and I have a clean back of my card here. Now I'm going to add a little more detail on the edges, I'm taking my Versamark ink pad and I'm just barely kind of pressing the edges of the card front into the ink pad. This is going to give a really light line of Versamark right along the edges. I'm going to take that green embossing powder once again. I think this is called Jelly Bean. That's the color name. Sprinkle it on the edges. You've seen me do this in videos in the past with gold embossing or silver embossing powder on like more holiday-esque cards, but you can do this with any color embossing powder and it's a great way to bring more color into your card. So I'm gonna use my heat tool to heat set this embossing powder until it melts. And then I have my card base complete. I added some foam adhesive on the back of my watercolor and then place that over top of my card base. And that's pretty much going to finish the card for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this fun robot card and maybe you'll try out that new watercolor technique. Um, what did I call it again? It was dry palette marker watercoloring. There we go. Um, thanks so much for watching. And now we're gonna go into some details on that giveaway that I mentioned at the very beginning of the video. So you'll want to make your way over to my blog at kwarnerdesign.com to enter the giveaway to win a free spot in watercolor for card makers intermediate techniques. This is a brand new class over onlinecardclasses.com that we just announced last week. The teacher is Dawn Woolsegel. She is from W plus nine and she's a fantastic watercoloring artist. She's participated as a guest artist in previous watercolor classes and we've been blown away with all of the amazing techniques that she's shown us and we knew she'd be the perfect instructor for an additional watercolor class. I've had the opportunity to see this class take form as she's been creating all of the videos and even just watching the videos for this class it's greatly influenced my own watercoloring. Um, I'm going to be one of the guest artists in the class. I'll have a couple different videos to share in class so I hope you'll join us over at onlinecardclasses.com.
Thanks for watching until the very end of today's video. On screen are my last three card videos for you to check out. I have those psychedelic trees from last week and then the last two cards from the holiday card series. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you over at my blog at kwarnerdesign.com and you can catch me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and Pinterest. Have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next video.